안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And today we're going to build and deploy an app using a stack I've been dying to show you. We are going to use Dino, Fresh, Dino Deploy, and Dino KV to build a voting web app. By the end of this video, you are going to be surprised at how easy it is to build something with the Dino stack compared to using Next.js, React, and Versa. Before we start, let's first define what all the parts of the stack are and what they do. Created by the same mind behind Node.js, Ryan Doe, Dino is a fairly new JavaScript, TypeScript, and WebAssembly runtime built on the Rust programming language. That means that Dino is a Rust program that can understand and execute TypeScript, JavaScript, and WebAssembly code. Dino is different from Node.js in many ways. It has a more secure permissions model, and it does not have NPM install or Node modules. Dino also implements web platform APIs, which means the learning curve is not that high since we all have used these APIs on the browsers before. It is basically Node.js if the creator of Node.js could go back in time and fix his mistakes. Fresh is the next JS of the Dino world. It is a web framework with features like server-side rendering, API routes, and all that you would expect. It does not use React. Instead, it uses Preact. And it uses something called island-based client hydration that makes loading and interaction times faster. It requires no configuration, no building step, and it comes with TypeScript support out of the box. Dino Deploy is a cloud service where we can deploy JavaScript, TypeScript, and WebAssembly apps with no config whatsoever. It's like the Vercel or Netlify of the Dino world. Dino KV is a key value database that can be used by any Dino program that is deployed using Dino Deploy. And because it's built on FoundationDB, it can handle millions of operations per second. It's currently on beta, but thankfully, I've got an invitation so we can try it out. After installing Dino using any of the many methods of installation, we are going to run this command to create a new fresh project. This will install fresh and it's going to ask us for the name of the project, if we want to use Tailwind and if we use VS Code. After we reply yes to all of them, we're going to open the folder in our VS Code. There we're going to delete all the boilerplate files the installer has created for us and we are going to create a file called index.tsx inside of the routes folder. Fresh has the same routing idea as Next.js. So if, for example, you create a file called about.tsx inside of the routes folder, that page will be visible on the slash about page of your website. We also have an islands folder. This is where we are going to put our interactive components. In our index.tsx page, we will write down this code. This HTML code has a form with a method post and three inputs, one for a question and two more for the options. We are also using the head component from from fresh that allows us to change the title from the head. To see what this looks like in the browser, we are going to run fresh by going to our console and running the Dino task start command. Then when we go to localhost 8000, we will see a form that looks like this. As you can see, when we write down our question, the options and click on the button, we get an error. We have to write the code to process the submission of the form. To process the form, we are going to write this code on top of the home component. Inside of the object called handler, there is a post function that Fresh will automatically call when we submit the form. Inside of it, we are getting the value of the form and responding to the user with the same values to check that everything is working. How cool is this? We did not don't have to write any fetch code, no event listeners. Awesome! To save the question, as well as the options on the database, we're going to extend the post handler a bit. Here we are creating an object called payload that will hold all the data of the question as well as the vote counters that both start in zero. We also give it a random ID. Here is what it would look like. We are then calling the Dino KV database and we are saving the question object into it as a string using the random ID as a key. Then we are redirecting the user to the URL slash questions slash question ID that would look something like this. As you can see, it looks like the submission is working because we are being redirected, but that URL is not found, which makes sense since we haven't created that page yet. To handle this URL, we are going to create a new file inside of the questions folder, and we're going to write this code. Here we are using the handler 
another object again, but we are now writing a get function inside of it. This is a function that will be called server side when the user goes to that page. On this function, we are looking for a question with the ID that is on the URL the user was redirected to. If we find it, we will call context.render with the question from the database. That data will be passed down to the question component where we will show the user an H1 with the question they asked. This is how the page looks like after we refresh the browser. We are now going to create a button that we can click to send and record a vote on our database. For this, we're going to create a new component on the islands folder called button.tsx. The islands folder is where we put the interactive components. They are the ones rendered on the client side. On the bottom island, we are going to write this code. This is a component that receives some props, like the question ID, the option text, the amount of votes that option has, and the number of option it is option one or option two. For interactivity, we use preacts use signal, which is similar to reacts use state. On the function on click, which will be called when we click the button, just for now, we are changing the value of the loading signal to true. And after a second and a half, we are setting it back to false. We are also increasing the number of the votes signal, which has a default value of the current number of votes of the question. We then import the button component in to our question component. And now our page looks like this with interactivity and everything. To record votes on our database, I would like to get a URL like this one, where we will get the question ID the user is voting on, as well as which option they chose. For this, we're going to create a new file on our routes folder. There, we will write down this code. Let's go through it part by part. First, we are extracting the query parameters ID and option from the URL. Then we are getting the question from the database. After that, we are using json.parse to turn that string into a JS object. And then we are updating that question using kv that set. If the option parameter on the URL is one, we are increasing the value of the option one votes, else we are increasing number twos. Now all is left is to make the button component send a request to that endpoint. Now in the on click function, we are sending a fetch post request to our API endpoint with the question ID and the option parameters. We now should be able to click the buttons and after we refresh the page, the votes count should come from the data base. Deploying is incredibly easy. After logging into Dino deploy dashboard, all we have to do is select the GitHub repo where the project is, and it will all be deployed automatically in a number of seconds. As you can see, the app looks great. We can test it immediately, and we also get a sweet admin panel where we can see logs, analytics, and we can even visualize the data in our Dino KV. Even though it looks like it, this video is not sponsored by Dino. I wish it was. I am just super, super impressed by what the Dino team has built, and I wanted to share it with you. It is all so seamless and easy to use that it takes no time to build a functioning product that can be scaled to millions of users thanks to Dino Deploy. Fresh works like a charm. The way forms are handled API routes, interactivity, the developer experience, it is all really good. As you saw, I spent zero time installing dependencies, configuring TypeScript, Tailwind, etc. Fresh has it all. I really want to know what you think. So please write down on the comments what your opinion is on the Dino stack. Did you know it is this cool? Have you built something with it? Should I make a Dino Fresh and Dino Deploy course? Write what you think on the comments. I am going to be reading right now. And don't forget, if you want to learn things like JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, among many others for absolutely free, all you have to do is click the link below. You can join any of our many free courses you can take right now for absolutely free with me. Click the link below and I will see you there. Onjana, kamsa hago, sarang hamida. See you on the next one. Down me bayo. Bye bye.